but let's talk about the holy day. Does God really care what day we worship on? We are free and encouraged to worship God every day. Is that not true? We are encouraged to worship Him 24-7. We can even meet um, any, on any day of the week. We can meet every day of the week. But a worship or a meeting day are two different days. Only one day is holy or set apart. Sunday is usually referred to as the Lord's Day. This could be due to the fact that Sunday is the day that the Lord, or Jesus, resurrected. Most Christians would believe that the resurrection is the reason why the Sabbath was changed to Sunday. The Lord's Day would be a day that God would set apart to be holy. This is only the Sabbath day, the day that God set apart for himself and for us to obey would be considered the Lord's day. Uh, Exodus 20 verse 11, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Those who refute the, the validity of the Sabbath day still being binding upon Christians for today often quote the, the book Colossians thinking that this verse means not to observe and keep the Sabbath day. So let's take a look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or the Sabbath day. This verse is understood backwards, actually. It doesn't mean don't let others judge you in doing the Sabbath, but to be diligent in doing the Sabbath and not receiving judgment or criticism in keeping the Sabbath. So the criticism, the, the admonishment here in this verse is not to give in for people for, um, for not doing the Sabbath, but not, to not give in to the criticism for people criticizing us who do keep the Sabbath. <clears throat> so we have this Sabbath war that, peop that people em embark upon in defending why the Sunday is the new Sabbath or why Sabbath should still be kept. Um, so we have to look at these handwriting uh, ordinances that are against us that speak of the transgressions that we have acquired. So in Colossians 2.14 is a good verse that a lot of people give for a reason why, why we don't keep the Sabbath anymore. They will quote this in a lot of times in not keeping the Sabbath or in not doing certain commandments. And it goes like this, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. So the error a lot of people make with this verse is they will say, the blotting of the handwriting of ordinances that went against us, that is God's law of God's Torah. And that when Jesus got on the cross, that, that he nailed his law to the cross and he did away with it. And it's abolished and it's done away with. Well, <clears throat> there's some misunderstanding in this verse. What was contrary to us was our sins. As it is, is sin that wars against us and keeps us separated from God because God because between us and God sin separates us so the ordinances that are contrary to us is sin because breaking of God's law is sin so the ordinances that are against us is sin because what's against us is death so the sins are contrary to us. So God took the sins that are against us and he nailed it to his cross. That he, that's what he died for. He died to get rid of the wages of our sin. He, got, he died to get rid of the sins that are against us that, that, that um, uh, sentence us to death. So the ordinances aren't his law. It is the breaking of his law. What was, what was nailed to the cross was our sins so that we would know salvation. God's commandments were not nailed to the cross, but the breaking of his commandments were nailed to the cross. The cross did not give us freedom 
from God's commandments, but it gave us freedom from the penalty of breaking God's commandments. <clears throat> so we have the thing of Sunday versus Sabbath. This war continues. Which one do we do? Is it Sunday or is it the Sabbath day? Sunday is often linked of as going to church. For most observant Christians, according to Wikipedia, Sunday is, is observed as the day of worship and rest, holding it as the Lord's day and the day of Christ's resurrection. So this is how traditionally people see as going to church. They say, oh, we're going, we're going on Sunday. That's what typically runs through our minds. Uh, the Middle English, there's a Middle English word that means day of the sun. That is Sunday. That's what Sunday means. It's a Middle English word. And so um, typically people will refer to this as the Christian Sabbath. So when they're looking at their Ten Commandments, a lot of them can re reword it as, as something like, keep uh, Sunday special, <laughs> uh, which is not the Sabbath day. So uh, a lot of people can validate keeping Sunday as the Sabbath day as they're, they're thinking when the Ten Commandments says, uh, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, they think, well, that, that just means keeping the Lord's day or keeping one day unique or special or separate from the others. But it's not. There is only one day that is the Sabbath day. Um, so they, they like to call um, Sunday as the Christian Sabbath. Church is more accurately defined as the assembly of Israel and not um, a building we go to or a group of people. Um, I like to think of the assembly of Israel as, as um, what we're supposed to think of as the church. Uh, and and in, in the Greek interpretation, the Greek uh, interprets church as ecclesia or assembly. So ecclesia meaning assembly, we can transfer that over in our better understanding to mean the assembly of Israel and not church. Sunday is linked to Christians and the New Testament church. So people don't typically think of church being in the Old Testament, that church is a new invention with the new covenant. But really, the Bible is really a better understanding of being one book. And so it's a story from Genesis to Revelation. And it's a story of, it's actually a love story. It's a love story how God redeems his bride. <clears throat> and so if we start understanding the church, if we want to use that word, as the assembly of the bride or the assembly of Israel. So Sunday, Sunday church is not really mentioned in the Old Testament. Church is not mentioned in the Old Testament. <clears throat> church is not even really a New Testament word because church is really an English word. And so we can better refer to ourselves as the assembly of Israel. So the assembly of Israel has existed in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. Sunday worship among Christians, they say, be, um, began at the Feast of Pentecost. Uh, well, they say that's when the church was birthed, but the church actually birthed um, when God created Israel at Mount Sinai. And um, the precursor origins or the seeds of Israel's birth can also be traced back to um, Abraham when he is the first Hebrew. But if we really look at church history, church history and Sunday worship begins when the Catholic Church begins in the fourth century, um, the early parts of, the, of, of, of the 300s AD. Uh, and, and in the church's mind and, and Sunday keeping Christians, they tend to link Sabbath keeping with Judaism, with Seventh-day Adventists, with Hebrew roots. Um, and they, they tend to, to associate Sabbath keepers with people who want to keep the law and get back under the law. Um, and so these are the things that we are linked with. But Sabbath keeping actually began at creation. When God 
created the world. He created it in six days, and the seventh day he rested. And, and then from there on, he commanded the rest of us to, um, to keep the Sabbath day. And I actually believe, as well as uh, many others, that Sabbath was actually ob observed by Adam and Eve. It was observed by Noah. It was observed by um, Abraham. It was, it was observed long before the Sabbath command was, was given in Exodus. So it's my belief that Sabbath command has always been here. Um, so Sabbath command keeping has been around for thousands of years. Commanded Sunday worship was um, commanded really by man and not by God. God didn't institute Sunday worship. The, the only set apart day that God established was the Sabbath day. And so we don't find anywhere that uh, that the disciples or Jesus or Paul ever changed the Sabbath day to Sunday. Commanded Sabbath wor worship was commanded by God, kept by Jesus and the disciples and found throughout Scripture. <clears throat> the argument for Sunday is based upon in respect of the resurrection and meetings on the first day of the week. The first uh, century church met on the first day of the week, Sunday, or the one of the Sabbaths as it is translated in the Greek. Anti-Sabbath keepers strongly believe that Jesus did away with the Sabbath by doing away with the law. Because Catholics changed the Sabbath to Sunday and initiated other pagan practices such as Lent and Good Friday, we need to investigate these practices to see the whole picture of the Roman transformation of Christianity. Lent and Good Friday are disguised and offered as Catholic days of sacrament, but both are steeped in paganistic worship. And because these things, these days have, um, have paganistic roots, they transfer over into um, non-denominational, Protestant, evangelical, and other Christian denominations that, that they may not be aware of that they have Catholic origins and they still practice them because since the Catholic Church changed the Sabbath day, um, other Protestant denominations are deemed as Catholic children. Protestant denominations stem from Catholic roots and have, have some Hebraic roots, but they, Christianity today, they have a mixture of pagan and Hebraic and Catholic roots. And so they remain Catholic um, children of Rome, children of Rome and Constantine. Cyril of, uh, Cyril of Jerusalem says, fall not away either into the sect of the Samaritans or into Judaism, for Jesus Christ has henceforth ransomed you. Stand aloof from all observances of Sabbaths and from coming, calling any indifferent meats uncommon or clean. And this is quoted from the catechetical lectures of A.D. 350 of Cyril of Jerusalem. So he is admonishing people to not keep the commandments of God. He's in here in this statement. He's saying, don't get into Judaism because they keep the Sabbath day and they eat clean. Well, God has called us to eat clean foods. He's called us to keep a Sabbath. Um, in, um, in the Catholic world, from William Geldia, he says, The Catholic Church took the pagan, the pagan buckler of faith against the heathen. She took the pagan Roman pantheon, the Roman temple, to all the gods and make it sacred to all the martyrs, so it stands to this day. She took the pagan Sunday and made it the Christian Sunday. The sun was a foremost god with heathendom. Balder the beautiful, the white god, the old Scandinavians called him. The sun has worshippers at this hour in Persia and other lands. There is in truth something royal, kingly about the sun, making it a fit emblem of Jesus, the son of justice. Hence the church would seem to have said, keep that old pagan name. It shall remain consecrated, sanctified, and thus the pagan Sunday dedicated to Balder became the Christian Sunday sacred to Jesus. 
The Son is a fitting emblem of Jesus. The fathers often compared Jesus to the Son as they compared Mary to the moon. And again, this comes from William L. Geldia in his book, in, in the article, Pascale Condium in the Catholic World. And so, and Sunday, there are eight New Testament represent, references to the first day of the week. Only eight of them. Five verses talk about the resurrection, and three verses talk about first day of the week meetings. None of these eight verses specify a change from Sabbath to Sunday. It, uh, according to um, cgg.org, if the day was changed to Bible, by Bible authority, if Christians are to find any biblical authorization whatsoever for observing Sunday as the Lord's Day today, then we must find that authority in one of these eight texts. So what this website is saying, out of the eight verses we have in the New Testament about meeting on the first day of the week, or anything about the first day of the week, we better find something about God's day being changed by God's authority alone. Let's look at some of these New Testament verses that are supposed to support a Sunday change um, from the Sabbath. In Matthew 28, 1, it says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sep sepulcher. Okay, so we don't see any change right here that, God, that the change of the Sabbath to Sunday is clear. There's no, there's no change here in this verse. Let's look, take a look at another one. John 20, verse 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Okay, let's look at this verse. Let's see is, if there's anything that says that the first day of the week is going to replace the seventh day. No, we don't see anything here. Okay, let's take a look at a third one. At Mark 16, 2, it says, And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. Does this verse contain a change from Sabbath to Sunday? No, it does not. Nowhere in the scriptures that the Sabbath was changed in honor of the resurrection. <clears throat> okay, now let's look at the other reasoning that we have for changing Saturday to Sunday, which is meetings on the first day of the week. Let's look at John chapter 20, verse 19. It says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. So here's something interesting to think about. If Jesus is here, appearing to the disciples, would this not be a great time for him to say, I am telling you now, change the Sabbath to Sunday in honor of the resurrection. But Jesus does not say this. And neither does anyone else say this in this verse. So here's something to consider. The disciples were here meeting for the feasts that were centered about the Omer Shaviot count, and not because that it was necessarily Sunday. The disciples met, but it doesn't say they changed the Sabbath day. The meeting day and the holy day of the week are different events of the week. So these disciples are meeting. They're, they are meeting because it is the first, it is the they are meeting because it is the first Sabbath after the Feast of Unleavened Bread to, to meet for counting of the Omer to Shaviot. And if you l watch my other teaching about time the Creator's calendar, you'll, you'll learn how this count works with Shaviot. Okay, so we look at Acts 20, verse 7. And upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, bread Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech unto midnight. This is a meeting day and not a change to the Sabbath. The first day of the week here is an English mistranslation of Greek. So we have to understand the Bibles that we have now, they are, they are not 
the, the same translations they had at this time. So, the Bible is written in Hebrew or Aramaic and is translated to Greek, which is translated to Latin, which is translated to Old English, which is translated to Modern English. So the Bibles we have today, they are a translation of a translation. So this scripture here says, and upon the first day of the week, in the original Greek, it means mia ton sabaton, which means one of the Sabbaths, okay? This does not mean the first day of the week, but one of the Sabbaths. So what one of the Sabbaths is it talking about? Um, it is talking about uh, the one of the Sabbath, one of the seven day Sabbath counts of the Omer to Shaviot. So between the first Sabbath after, after the Feast of Love and Bread and the, the, the counting of seven Sabbaths to Shaviot, that's seven weeks, there, there's this Omer count. And so they are meeting on the first Sabbath of this Omer count. The first day of the week is a, is, is a, of a, is a Greek mistranslation. It doesn't mean first day of the week, but one of the Sabbaths, and one of the Sabbaths is one of the seven Sabbaths of the Omer count. The disciples met on the first day of the week. This validates the Sunday meetings to replace the Sabbath, right? Wrong. Acts 26 and 7. We look here what it says. It says, we sailed away from Philippi after the days of an unleavened bread. So that's a key part to remember right here is that it's after the days of unleavened bread. <clears throat> and in five days we came to them at Troas where we stayed for seven days. On the first day of the week, when we, when, we, when we were gathered together to break bread, Paul talked with them, intending to depart on the next day, and he prolonged his speech unto midnight. So, so let's take a closer look at Acts 20, verse 6. It says, But we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. <clears throat> so that's the part we have to focus on right there is unleavened bread happens after Passover. It's the day after Passover, and unleavened bread lasts for seven days. Paul and his company sailed after the last day unleavened bread, <clears throat> which is a high Sabbath. First fruits is the first Sunday after Passover. In the midst of unleavened bread is the feast of first fruits. Seven days after first fruits would be the first Sabbath of the Omer count. And we start counting, <clears throat> we start counting at first fruits. Mia ton sabaton in Greek means one of the Sabbaths. The Greek word for week is hebdomas and not sabaton as it reads in Acts 20. Seven. So, one of the Sabbaths is, is more correct and not the first day of the week, as we see in Luke 24, 1, John, John 20, verse 1, John 20, verse 19, Acts 20, verse 7, and Matthew 6, 2, and 9, and Matthew 28, verse 1. These are the first of the Sabbaths. So, these are the first of the Sabbaths that are involved in the... Um, uh, the counting of the Omer to Shaviot. Um, and we look at Acts 20, verse 7. Um, in the Jubilee Bible, it says, And the first of the Sabbaths, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached to them, ready to depart the next day, and continued his word until midnight. So Paul is continuing to talk to them until midnight. Um, on the day that is still Sabbath. Um, it is still, I mean, biblically, it turns into the first day of the week, but they're staying together to be taught until midnight. And this is according to the Jubilee Bible 2000. So in Acts 20, verse 7, on the first day of the week, 
the first day of the week can be the first day of the Shavua in Hebrew or week or the first Sabbath of the Omer count because after Passover um, the first Sabbath after Passover would be the start of the Omer count um, and whereas uh, first fruits which is a Sunday is also happening after um, the first Sabbath following Passover or unleavened bread. So we look at this Greek word inde te mea ton sabaton. It translates in then the first day, as in of the week, um, or translated in the one of the Sabbaths. And sabaton can mean the Sabbath or week. The sabaton would be the long feast of unleavened bread and is uh, the first day or the sabaton of weeks. The correct rendering of first day in Greek would be day one and not the first day. The reasoning for changing the Sabbath to Sunday is given because Jesus resurrected on the first day of the week. In John 20 verse 1, it says the first day of the week comes Mary Magdalene, Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. So we focus on this word, the first day of the week. Mia ton sabaton in the original Greek means day one of the Sabbaths. In John 20 verse 1, in, it says, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark. Te de mea ton sabaton can translate into the first day of the week or day one of the Sabbaths. Reasoning for changing the Sabbath to, to Sunday is given because Jesus resurrected on the first day of the week. The first day of the week in this verse is can be translated in the original Greek, Mia ton Sabadon, day one of the Sabbaths. So there's a lot of things that are happening after the Passover. We have unleavened bread that's happening the day after Passover. And then we have first fruits that happens the first Sunday after unleavened bread. And then we have the Omer count that is starting the Sabbath, the first Sabbath after unleavened bread. So Mia ton Sabaton, it could mean the first of the Sabbaths or day one of the Sabbaths, which would begin the Omer count of Shaviot, which means that we've incorrectly translated what it means as the first day of the week. There are only three New Testament verses about meeting on the first day of the week. Um, but there's no mention of anything in any of those verses about a change in the Sabbath day because of that they met on the first day of the week. There are 55 New Testament verses about the Sabbath day, but only six verses in Acts, speaking of early Christians continuing in the practice of the Sabbath day. Acts 17.2 talks about Paul, um, as his manner was, went and unto them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scripture. This continued to be Paul's normal routine. It was not only his custom, but it was part of his doctrine about his beliefs about how he and other believers like him, they continued in the tradition and the commandment of keeping the Sabbath. That is uh, part of what he did and he continued to do. He continued to teach and reason on the Sabbath day as was the custom, as, as, as was the custom of Jesus who also kept the Sabbath day. And we see that in Luke chapter 4 verse 16. And it says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. So we see this connection between Luke 4.16 and Acts 17.2. Both Paul and Jesus had a custom of keeping the Sabbath day. Acts 18.14 says, And Paul reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. Acts 17, 2, and Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them 
out of the scriptures. The word reason here means to discuss.